Okay, let us make a frittata. Frittata. Here's onion and thyme frittata, but it's a New York Times cooking, so it's probably not gonna let me look at it. Cherry vinegar. What about actual cherry? Yeah. I bet you I could. Yeah, I don't see why not. We have yeah, red vinegar, vinegar too. too. Okay. You're saying to like soak the onions for an hour. I'm not doing that. Okay, the star of today's video is going to be this shallot and thyme frittata. I was going to use a recipe from the New York Times, but it was a little bit too complicated for me. So as you can see, I'm going ahead and dicing up my shallot. You could also use an onion here. That would work great too. And then I'm going to show you this really cool trick that I use to separate out my thyme. So I'm just going to grab a sprig and then you're just going to pull down on the sprig. So kind of the opposite direction that the bits of thyme are facing so much easier than trying to pick them off one by one. I used about a tablespoon of thyme for this recipe. Just heating up my cast iron here. Any sort of pan is fine as long as you can put it under the broiler because I do end up broiling this for a minute, making sure I oil it up real good so that it hopefully doesn't stick. That's kind of something you have to be aware of with the frittata. You don't want that thing to stick. Making sure that the oil is hot enough and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my shallot. We're just gonna saute this for a bit so that it gets nice and yummy and caramelized. I also end up adding a little bit of sherry. You could do a bit of, oh gosh, I guess any sort of wine really, or you could just do like a little bit of a yummy chicken broth, just something to kind of add a bit to it, or you could not do it at all. It really doesn't matter. This isn't complicated cooking. It's just something to create a yummy breakfast or lunch for your home. I'm on medium high heat here. You don't want these to burn or start to get too crusty. So if it seems like that's happening, just bring down the heat to a low. As you can see, I'm checking to make sure that that is not happening. If ever you're worried, you can always just take your pan off the heat too if you are a new chef. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and add in that thyme. Again, don't want it to burn, but we wanna get a little bit of a saute on it help the herb to bloom a bit. So you should really start to smell it there. And then I'm going to add some salt and pepper to this as well for some added flavor. All right, so now I am adding that sherry. Now be careful here, cause it's gonna react a little bit. Once you pour it in, just make sure you don't burn yourself. Okay, so I'm going to now saute off that sherry. You can see here, it's just about sauteed off. I'm cutting my heat. And then I am going to just grab my oven mitt so that I can remove this from the heat so it can cool down a bit before we add it to the eggs. Now I'm going to crack all eight of the eggs that I put in here and going to give those a good stir, really work them well. Adding some more salt and pepper. And then I'm going to add a couple splashes of milk. You could add a bit of cream. You could not add it, I'm sure that'd be fine too. And then I'm gonna add some Parmesan, stir all of that together. And then I'm gonna add back in those caramelized onions. This pan was so heavy that I actually couldn't do it all in one run. I had to go back to the stove and switch hands to get the rest of the onions out of there because I thought my wrist was gonna break off. So that is what's happening here. Lodge, please sponsor me. <laughs> and then I am getting that pan heated back up. You can see that looks like about a medium high heat. You want the egg to start cooking as soon as you pour it in, which I forgot to take a clip of, but here it is again. And then you just want to move it around a bit. Okay, I'm making sure that my Broiler is turned on low here, and then I'm just gonna top this egg for a minute. Now, I'm really not moving away from the stove here because we don't want the egg to get overcooked. That's one of the worst things that you can do in the kitchen is overcook an egg. So, continuing to move it around a bit, really babying it. That's what you have to do with a frittata, it's a baby. 
Okay, now I am moving it into the oven. I suggest turning your heat off before you put your face next to the stove, but as you can see, I was unsuccessful. Thankfully, Sam came to my rescue. And now we wait. I would go ahead and peek on that about every minute or so. Once it seems like it is just about set, maybe even a little bit early, go ahead, take it out of the oven, do some inspecting. That looks like a pretty nice golden. There was a little bit of olive oil that had risen to the top, so we had to figure out if that was actually olive oil or if it was uncooked egg. Either way, it's probably still cooking right now because that's a really hot pan. Go ahead and top it if you think it needs another second. Pull it off, and I was pretty satisfied with this cook. So you want to make sure it's not sticking. See if you can kind of separate the edges a bit as it cools. Let it cool for around 15 minutes or so, and then hopefully you are as lucky as I was, and it comes right out of the pan and onto the plate. Pop it in the fridge. We covered ours it's in good. saran wrap, it and okay. it was absolutely mm -hmm. delicious. The <laughs> next day, I had it as a lunch. I just heated it up in the microwave for like 10 seconds just so it was warm. Paired it with some nice, beautiful greens, topped those with a little bit of olive oil, balsamic, salt, and pepper. It was very satisfying and delicious. I was one happy chef. I'll leave these recipe details in the description down below. Hope you enjoy if you are brave and decide to make one yourself. I promise it's really not that difficult and who doesn't love a frittata for lunch? Happy Monday. As you can see, I'm keeping things very casual here today. I have been writing this morning and I just got done making my berry protein smoothie. So like I mentioned, I have spent the morning writing and that has been a nice way to kind of ease back into the week, ease into Monday. Something that I wanted to touch on in this video is this idea of being flexible with our schedules. This is something I've spoken about a little bit in the past, and I think it's one of those things that's just good to sort of reinforce. I often get questions about how I schedule out my day, how I set out the best, most optimal schedule for myself, because many of us, whether we're PhD students or we're just professionals working from home or Maybe we don't even have a set career path that we're on right now, but we all have this need to try to find the best schedule for ourselves in our day-to-day. -day. One overarching theme that I continue to embrace in my day-to-day -day is this idea that I can be flexible with my schedule. So if I, let's say, have a particular task that I have set out to do, that morning. So maybe I want to wake up in the morning and I want to work on data analysis. Maybe I'm having a lot of trouble focusing that day. Working on some sort of a more creative task like writing or building an experiment, programming, I don't know what it is for you. But for me, when I feel that way, working on maybe a little bit more of a creative task can actually end up being a lot more productive. When we're thinking about how we can optimize productivity, I think if we could just embrace this idea that sometimes we just need to be willing to shift, pivot, choose a different task that aligns more with how we're feeling that day, that can actually improve our productivity, allows us to still make progress on something if we just are too stubborn and we tried too desperately to hold on to what it was that we set out to do, we can end up wasting the day away without really making any progress because that task actually wasn't a good fit for us in that moment or on that day. That's something that I did for myself today. I anticipated waking up and immediately getting to programming an experiment that I'm working on, but I actually found that I was feeling a little bit uneasy this morning. I decided to do a meditation that really helped to ground myself and get back into the right mindset, decided to jump into working on some writing. And now I'm feeling like, okay, I could probably ease into working on the programming that I had intended to work on at the start of the day. You never know, you could actually end up being a lot more productive by doing so. So let me know what you think. Can you relate to that idea? Is that something that you also implement within your own work? And do you find that it works well for you?
Hello, it is the next day. I am getting ready to head out to go into the labs and then to a meeting later today. So I thought I would do a quick little outfit of the day, show you what I'm wearing. Really comfy, relaxed to go in. This is an old Madewell t-shirt, but I wanted to really emphasize this skirt. It's a little bit better. So it's this kind of floor length skirt. I am 5'4", so take that into account. It's from Target. So comfy. I've been wearing it like every day since I got it and I absolutely love it. I think it's still available, so I will link that for you. And then to go with it, I wanted to show you this amazing blazer too. I think I'm just gonna throw it in my bag in case I need it. It is Ralph Lauren and I got this from Thread Up. So I've always wanted to try shopping there and I finally gave it a shot. This is a size four. It's like that perfect kind of oversized feel, but then still a good length in the arms, which I really like. You can close it, it has like the four closure and I mean, what a steal, right? So if you have ever wanted to try out Thread Up, I definitely recommend it. I love thrifting, as you know, but how amazing to be able to do it from the comfort of your own home. I will put my link down below so you can get a discount with your first order. I did get one other thing from them too. I also got this skirt from Thread Up, which is made well, actually, and think it's really cute for the holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas I think it will be perfect it just ties here on the sides so you can like cinch it however much you want to just perfect for the holiday season I'm loving plaid for fall and I think skirts are like the perfect attire for fall because Falls that time where you're cool like in the mornings, but then you can get a little bit overheated in the afternoons. So I feel like a skirt paired with some sort of blazer or a coat is a really good transition piece because you can kind of layer it up or down. And yeah, it just, for me, is like the most comfortable option in the fall time and I love some comfort. So I am going to pack up my bag and get ready to head out for the day. I had a pretty productive morning. Hope you enjoyed watching this vlog. I would love it if you would comment down below, say hello, and subscribe. And I will see you in my next one.